Now, this is probably my favorite candidate uh, in the Ravens' whole offensive coordinator search so far. Uh, let's just read the report straight from Adam Schefter. He said, Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy has been requested to interview for the Ravens' offensive coordinator job per sources. Bieniemy also remains under consideration for the Colts' head coach job that he has interviewed for and the Titans' offensive coordinator job, amongst other situations. So, um, I, I really like this. I seriously do. Reason being because, I mean, this is somebody I put in a request for the Ravens to request to interview, but this is the Ravens actually moving. So many times, whether it comes to players and now with this whole thing, we've heard it about coaches too. We hear, oh, Ravens are interested in such and such. Ravens are interested in that guy. Ravens are interested in him. Ravens are interested in that, but then we see a lack of action behind it or even a lack of closing. But this process, them starting like this and them actually putting in the request like, hey, we're not just interested in Eric Bieniemy like the report that we heard about a week ago. No, we're actually going to request to interview Eric Bieniemy. So this is another step in the right direction, in my opinion, for these Baltimore Ravens. Now, with Eric Bieniemy, uh, it, it doesn't stop there though um the report that followed that came from uh ian rapaport he said the commanders have yet to hire an offensive coordinator and one reason why they've requested permission to interview chiefs offensive coordinator eric b enemy and he's emerged as a potential key candidate uh, sources say he also was requested by the Jets, the Titans, and the Ravens for offensive coordinator jobs. So, Eric B. Enemy is a hot commodity. Um, and the game to well, the game today uh, against the uh, the Bengals, this not that it will make or break his chances really with anything because it is just one game, and we already see the resume uh, of success that the Chiefs' offense has had. Um, but the game against the Bengals could just that could speed up the process and just make people's interest that much higher. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And Bengals like Bengals, Bengals like the ultimate trolls, man. You got to give it to them. They are the ultimate trolls, even with the mayor jumping in. And it's so, oh yeah, they are. I think Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow needs to take a DNA test to see if he's Patrick Mahomes' father. I said, whoa. Whoa, but anyway, um, so Eric B. Enemy, he is very hot out here. Now, um, while this is probably my favorite um, request for the Baltimore Ravens so far, and it's just a request, uh, it's not an official interview, but it is a start to actually be able to get an interview, um, I think this is actually the hardest person that it would be, that this, this person would be the hardest for them to actually land, Eric B. Enemy. Um, reason I say that, now, one, the Ravens' offensive coordinator job, uh, if Lamar Jackson is going to be a Baltimore Raven, who knows? We'll see. Because uh, we don't know yet. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who like feel like that deal is going to get done. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't feel like the deal is going to get done. There's a lot of people that hope the deal gets done. There's a lot of people that hope that doesn't hope the deal gets done. For those people that hope the deal doesn't get done. But anyway, um, we, don't, we don't know what's going to happen with Lamar Jackson. Uh, so that is something that makes not just landing Eric Bieniemy, but really landing any offensive coordinator that makes this very difficult because there's so much uncertainty. But even before that, with Eric Bieniemy, he's obviously well sought after. But then on top of that too, on top of both of those things, this would be a lateral move. So. With this being a lateral move, I think that that makes it that much more difficult to make it happen. Um, because it wouldn't just be a lateral move with the Ravens. I mean, we, we you heard about the other teams that are have been requesting to interview Eric Bieniemy, also for offensive coordinator jobs. So with, with the uncertainty that the Ravens have, uh, but also him being requested by several other teams for the same position, hey, the competition is there. It's there. Um, now, another thing, too, on top of that, um, what happens if he gets requested for a head coach opportunity? Because, yeah, being an offensive coordinator on another team, it could be cool. You could add to your resume and whatnot. But I'm sure he wants to be a head coach. Like, if, if an opportunity comes along for him to actually be a head coach, 
He could be looking at all the offensive corner and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. That, yeah, that's nice. Da, 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 da. But oh, oh, head coach. Oh yeah, let me get on that. Let me talk to them. Let me see what they talking about. So that's something else that I think uh, could be in the Baltimore Ravens' way uh, when it came to the possibility of bringing on one Eric B. Enemy. Now, um, another thing. I always hear people say, uh, they always say, um, oh, well, Eric B. Enemy, he doesn't even call the plays. Uh, with, and Andy Reid calls the plays. Eric B. Enemy doesn't even call the plays. So, and and I, I, I see people try to make that like a bad thing for Eric B. Enemy. Um, when a, a QB coach gets hired to be off, does, does a QB coach call plays? Unless, unless I said something I don't know, but does a QB coach call plays? But there have been plenty of QB coaches that are requested to become offensive coordinators. But does a QB coach call plays? I don't think so. We always see them get requested to be offensive coordinators. But Eric Bieniemy is an actual offensive coordinator. So he coordinates the offense. So I'm sure he knows the plays. He can call the plays. I'm sure he can even call plays before. He may even call some plays now. But like this, this notion, oh Eric being me, he doesn't even call the play. It's like, mm, come on now, like really. And I, and I see that I see that conversation among so many people. Um, so I, and I just like I, I don't. That's not a reason for me to be like, oh wait, no, okay, he doesn't. No, I, this would be the one that I would want the Ravens to hire. And, and again, um, it's I feel like the chances are slim. Obviously not impossible, but they are slim. Uh, but it just depends on so many, so many factors. Now, um, well, one good thing about Eric B. Enemy, uh, if he is, uh, at, if the Ravens could add him, I think it would be, and again, so much obviously depends on <laughs> what happens with Lamar Jackson. Like, so much depends on what happens with him, man. Like, it, it, really, every the way that the Ravens move moving forward, like this off season. Everything depends on Lamar. Everything does. Everything depends on Lamar Jackson. What's going to happen with him? It's like, it's so crazy, man, thinking about it, man. Because the offensive coordinator, who's going to be your offensive coordinator? That, that could depend on Lamar Jackson. How are you going to move in the draft? That could depend on Lamar Jackson. How are you going to move in free agency? That could depend on Lamar Jackson. Everything depends on what they're going to do. Because I well obviously y'all know I ain't got to explain it to y'all, um, but with Eric Bieniemy, uh, with him and I mean with a lot of other guys as well, but with him especially because it's it's been years and I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is, but it's been years where Eric Bieniemy every off season, his name comes up. Oh, it's a possibility that he goes there. It's a possibility that he goes there. It's a possibility that he goes there. I even remember, I remember last year. Last year, his contract ran out with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I was like, oh, whoa, 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 hold on now there, buddy. Be in me, buddy. Come on, get them, Ravens. But obviously, they had other plans. Now, those other plans that they had didn't quite work themselves out. But, hey, it's all good. It's over with now. Um, but every year, his name, it pops up. Maybe he'll go here. Maybe he'll be a head coach there. He interviewed there. Maybe he likes it there. Maybe he'll leave the Chiefs and go here. His name keeps popping up, but nothing has happened yet. Nothing has happened yet. Now, I, I don't know if it's been one of those cases where the team's just been like, no, Eric, no, no thanks. But then you would have to think like, man, we've seen other offenses that have not been as good as a Chiefs offense, and we've seen them. And they teams have hired other offensive guys that have less on their resume than one Eric B. Enemy. Uh, so it will be weird. Or on the flip side, too, maybe Eric B. Enemy, uh, it was one of those Eric DaCosta type of things. Well, maybe, and not even necessarily him taking over as a head coach from Andy Reid. Uh, so maybe I shouldn't have said Eric DaCosta. But what I meant when I said that is that he could just be waiting for the right opportunity. Eric, Eric DeCosta was different because he already had the opportunity and he was just turning down whatever. He was going to interviews and stuff or whatever, but he they had their plan with him taking over as the Ravens GM. Uh, they had that plan in place for a while. But with Eric Bieniemy, 
um, he could be turning down these opportunities or possible opportunities because he's just waiting on the right one. And because you don't want to just jump ship just to jump ship. You don't want to say, oh, I, I'm taking that job just to take that job, just just to get away uh, from the Chiefs. And I, I learned that um, I learned that at my last job um, before we started doing this full time. Um, I, I learned that because before I would uh, before I had got my last promotion, the position that I was in, I hated it. I did not like it at all. And I would be applying to this job. I'll be applying to this department, that department, that department, that department, that department. So I would have sometimes I would have interviews. Sometimes I wouldn't get an interview for these different departments. And I, I will never forget there was one recruiter because the company that I worked for, they had a re recruiting department. Um, and it was their job to help find jobs for, for people within the company. So this one recruiter, I appreciated her so much for this because I would have never known. She was like, she, and she took the time to speak with me, get to know me, find out what was going on. And they can see everything. They can see everything. They can see all the jobs that you applied for from within. They, they can see all of that stuff. So she was like, man, you've really been applying for a lot of jobs. You've really been applying for a lot of different departments. She said, when, 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 I was about to say when teams see that, when other teams, but when departments, when other departments see that, their hiring managers and whatnot, when they see that you've been applying to so many different uh, departments, it makes it look like, it doesn't even make it look like you want to work for their department, but it makes it more so look like you just want to get out of there. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> well, that's true, but I, I don't want it to look like that because she told me that that lessens their chances of even not even just hiring you but even bringing you in for an interview in the first place and I was like oh well that is something right there never thought of it like that so she was like you can continue to obviously apply to other departments or whatever but slow it down take it down a notch because again it's not a good look if you just sending out your resume here 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 because it almost looks desperate even though I was kind of desperate to get out um, but with Eric B enemy, uh, it could be with him. Like he may not be so desperate to get out and he may not, he may, he may, he may be like, you know what? The grass ain't necessarily going to be greener if I go over here. Oh yeah. I see that organization over there and nah, they ain't, nah, I, I ain't feeling them. I don't like the way they do business. Oh, I, I see that history. No, that's not a good fit for me. So he can take, take his time. Obviously he could take his time cause he's still, he's still with KC. He's still with them. So this is um, whatever he chooses, man. I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a well thought out process. Now, if that just happens to be uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, um, they're obviously well respected around the league. But I, I think if he could come to the Baltimore Ravens and really, uh, and again, so much depends on Lamar Jackson. A lot depends on Lamar Jackson. I wonder. Think about this too. For whoever the Ravens end up hiring as their next offensive coordinator, I wonder if, now I don't think they would, but I don't know, man. Again, everything depends on Lamar Jackson. I wonder if whoever they hire for their next offensive coordinator, if they would take a one-year deal or if they would want a one-year deal. If they would be like, you know what, I don't, I don't want to be stuck here, man. I Because I, I don't know what's happening with y'all quarterback. And I don't, don't want to come into a situation and then everything, the, the whole script gets flipped on me. So anyway, um, but with Eric B. Enemy, if he was to become a, an offensive coordinator for the Ravens and if Lamar Jackson stayed or if Lamar Jackson didn't stay and he still uh, ran a successful offense, it'd be tough. But uh, that could go good on his resume and possibly even provide him with a, another opportunity to be a head coach because um, he could go to uh, two. He could have been offensive coordinator, two franchises. And had success, and especially with the Ravens, like any whoever the offensive coordinator is next, and if they can, especially if they can get that passing game right, the running game gonna be fine. But if they can get that passing game right, oof, I, that that would just look so great on their resume. Like this Baltimore Ravens team, who's always like top five in excuse me in rushing, but they be at the bottom in passing. Or well, their passing just it, it needs significant improvement. Their passing game needs significant improvement. 
They they come out here and they get like two thousand yard receivers, not receiving tight ends, but receivers. And I obviously still get Mark Andrews involved a lot. That running game doing this thing. The offense is just they moving. They're scoring in the red zone. Their red zone efficiency goes up. Just everything improves. Their situational play calling gets much better. That could just look so good on an offensive coordinator's resume, especially for the Ravens offense. Because it's obviously been pointed out just how lackluster it's been. But with Eric Bieniemy specifically, maybe this could catapult him to a head coaching job, possibly. And obviously it would all depend on what opportunities are out there. You don't want to just jump at the first thing, but still. So anyway, I love y'all. Team, keep it clean. I, you know what? I really appreciate y'all for just every day, just listening to our thoughts on whatever's going on with this team. I appreciate it because y'all don't have to, but y'all do. So I appreciate you supporting Thank you. Um, enjoy the AFC and NFC championships. Gonna be some great games. Some really great games. I've seen some people say, oh, well, since since my team's not in it, I've seen the Ravens fans say it too. Oh, since my Ravens ain't playing and I ain't watching. I'm like, I am. <laughs> you, you, I don't know what you're gonna watch. That's fine, but I'm watching. I ain't gonna be like, you know what? Them Ravens ain't in it. I ain't turning on the TV. I ain't turning on football. Nah, I'm watching and I'm going to enjoy. So I hope y'all enjoy the games too. I know a lot of Ravens fans are gonna be rooting for the Chiefs heavy. <laughs> Cause it's like, I mean, it's like a lose lose anyway. I mean, Ravens ain't in the Super Bowl, obviously, so that's already a loss. But then it's like, man, Chiefs will be back again. And this, if Chiefs win, that would be their third Super Bowl, right? Because they beat the uh, the 49ers. They lost to the uh, Bucks, And if they get there now, that would be their third Super Bowl in, what, five, six years? Something like that. And then um, if the Bengals win, <laughs> like, woo, two Super Bowls in a row. Oh, my good. But even even the fact that they're in this position, they, they've passed the Ravens. I don't know Ravens fans don't like it. The Bengals have passed the Ravens. They've passed them. They 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 are in the position. Two years straight. Two years straight to be playing in the Super Bowl. Two years straight. <sighs> but anyway, um, so it's like it's it's a little loop up for, for Bengals, like they got bragging rights right now over the Ravens. They they got it. They got, we can talk about injuries and oh, what if and da, da, da. Two years straight. Two years straight. So, that's that. Anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.